Dag de Yiv agus Falcha. Hi, hello and welcome. It is John O'Sullivan from the Irish Pagan School and we are here with today's check-in chat and coffee talk. So um, we're talking mythology today. I'm just enjoying a bit of a, a work and uh, an exploration I've been doing about monsters in ancient Irish mythology. Uh, but before we dive into that, if you are interested in, in learning more about Irish history, mythology, um, folklore, national folklore, uh, there's a lot available for you at the Irish Pagan School and a whole lot of free resources that are available. So all you got to do is go to irishpagan.school forward slash free. There's a whole lot of classes there that are available to you. You can get to know various inf insights on deities. But the one I'm going to be talking about today is, of course, the god that I work for, which is the Dagda on Dagda Moor. So there's a free class there, um, the Dagda Domestic Deity and Hearth Hero, if you're interested to pick that up. It's irishpagan.school forward slash free. So, monsters. Was Ireland a place of monsters? Like everyone knows be Ireland as the land of saints and scholars is, is what many people understand it of nowadays. Um, but I've sp postulated that before we had the lands of saints and scholars, we had the land of heroes and chieftains. But before we had the land of heroes and chieftains, did we have a land of monsters? And so there are many different examples in the Irish lore where we have creatures that are referred to by monstrous description or by monstrous form or by monstrous deeds. Now, this is not, folks, the Fomorians, all right? Um, the Fomorians are said to come from either over the sea or under the sea. They are the ancestral enemy of the Namidians and the Firbolog and again, the two of the Danon. Um, but we know that two of the Danon kind of intermingled and bred and like conceived of children with Fomorians. Most famously was, of course, Bress, who became king of the Tuatha Danann after Nuada, after the first battle of Moitura. And he was actually known for his beauty. One of the reasons why he was selected to be king was because he was so beautiful. Um, and it was said, like, when his father kind of conceived him with his mother, before he was even born, it was like, he is actually going to be so beautiful that from now on, people would refer to things as a Bress. You know, and if they wanted to talk or compare, he became the standard for something as beauty. So uh, there are kind of modern folklore, modern kind of comics out there, modern fiction. Let's say it, it is fiction, um, like the I think it's 2000 ID slain kind of comics or whatever, um, where you have this titular hero who's a berserk warrior and fights against these monstrous creatures from under the sea. So people have adopted this media into the idea that the Fomorians are these horrible monstrous entities. So that is that is not that is not carried or supported in the lore. But there are monsters. There are kind of things that are referred to, everything from the Duverku, which was said to be a monstrous otter. And it was the, then the king of all otters almost. And it was said to be so big that it would leap from a lake and attack a rider, a rider passing by, not for the rider, but for the horse. It would dive through and rip out the center of the horse to kind of feed on. And this, you know, horses aren't small folks, which means this Doverku, if the horse was the favoured prey of Doverku, then the Doverku is pretty fucking big. But we do actually have further things that are even more monstrous. Up in the lakes known as Gugombara, there's a thing referred to as a paste. Now, the word paste is an Irish word for pest, um, but it could also be seen in multiple different descriptions, actually, for forms, some of which are actually quite draconic. And so in this instance, it's it's actually a saint um, who is brought along to kind of get the paste out of the lake. And so he comes along and he chants against the paste and the paste kind of comes up out of the lake and drags its body away down towards the sea. And as it's dragging its body along, it's actually the waters of the lake are flowing out, following it, making a new river. But the people who kind of brought the saint along, you know, keep chastising the poor paste every time it gets tired and tries to stop. And they start saying it's lying down or in Irish, it's in a lee. And so the saint would come along and hoosh it on with more chanting at it until it finally went out into the sea. And so the River Lee that runs down through Cork is said to have been made by the track of this monster clawing and dragging its way from the lakes up in the mountains right the way out to sea. So 
we have many tales of this, but the one I wanted to touch on, which is where I'm pursuing things a little bit more interestingly for me, is, of course, the Dagda. And the Dagda is said to be the good god of druidry and skill and art and you know one of the most powerful deities who has control over the sun, the moon, the land and the sea. And we know that story, that definition of his power from his story, but where he got the magic club, which added on the power over life and death. Um, but this powerful deity is said to have beaten a monster, a sea monster, um, on the plains of a place called Magmerhevna. Now, the reference to this tale comes from the Ulster cycle, so it doesn't come from the mythological cycle. And it's mentioned because this story is known by none other than Cúchulain. So Cúchulain, the titular individual, I'm reticent to say hero, folks, because Cúchulain isn't a hero, more on that in the future, if, if anyone is interested. Um but yeah, like the Cucullin claims a certain territory, which includes parts of modern day County Laos. And in that territory is a plain known as the Plain of Mag Merhevna. And when asked, like, you know, why is it called Mag Merhevna? He's like, oh, well, yeah, it's called Mag Merhevna because of this particular story. And the story comes from the mythological cycle and deals with the Dagda. So Merhevna means uh, darkness under sea or under ocean. Um, and it is said in the story that part of Ireland was subsumed, attacked and placed beneath a magical darkness or a magical wave by a monster. This monster was known as the Mata, and it was said to have a, a, a vast octopus head and a ravening body. Now, this creature was such that those who were caught in its power, caught by the waves, caught under the water, would be sucked down beneath the waves and they would be drowned in underneath the water. And then their treasures, their armors, their everything would be kept in the monster treasure bag. So this is the tale that we have describing how part of Ireland was kind of taken over by the waters, taken over by this monster which moved in. But the person to solve said issue was none other than this good god of druidry. And so the Dagda arrives, he comes in upon this creature in this plain. Um, well, actually, it wasn't even a plain at this point. It was just another part of the sea. And the Dagda comes and it says he places his mace of wrath. Now, whether or not this is the magic club or whether or not he actually has another separate item, which is a mace, but he places it down upon, it said, the hollow head of this octopus-like creature. And then he chants against it. So he calls upon his magical arts and he, you know, pretty much decries and satirizes the monster, but he doesn't slay it. He doesn't kind of end it. He doesn't kind of crush it and like, you know, anything like that at all. He drives it out of Ireland. And so the creature is then forced off the island, in which case it takes its water with it. It takes the waves with it. And Magma Hevna, this new plane is formed, this new kind of, element is added on to Ireland or returned to the island of Ireland by the Dagda driving this creature off the island. And so it's a fascinating tale about monsters. Um, some speculate that maybe this is kind of a, a origin tales. Ireland doesn't really have uh, a, a creation myth. We have our first kind of section of tor stories known as the Lara Gavala era and the Book of the Taking of Ireland, which talks about the different peoples coming into an already existent island but it doesn't have like an in the beginning, this happened and then the land and the sea were separated and all that. We don't actually have that in, in ancient Irish lore, but we do have these teasing tales of these monstrous entities um, who are powerful, like primordial entities like Crom Cruach, for example, the Kyliok um, Lear. We know Manon and Mach Lear, very famously Manon and Son of the Sea, but Lear is a name. It's the title of the sea, but we don't have any stories about Lear. So is it possible that there are older, older missing tales which deal with these primordial entities or deal with these elemental forces? And that in this instance, remembered later on down through the Ulster cycle, we have a recollection of some form of elemental conflict where you know, the new gods arrive in and overthrow these elemental entities, these monstrous creatures, and then create the land itself in which we now exist. So Magmar Havna um, is in County Louth. I hopefully will be taking a bit of a spin in the next short while. Who knows? Um, it'll be hard to kind of find many of these places nowadays. Um, but many of the names are still actually on the island. Like, you know, when we go to, for example, Nace in County Kildare, Nace is named after one of the wives of Lou. 
So when you go to Telltown, Telltown is named after Talchu, the foster mother of Lou. So there are many places still in Ireland, or on the island of Ireland, that bear these names from our ancient mythology. So who knows, the quest for Magma Heaven may actually happen. And if I do, I'm sure I'll take some videos and say this is probably as close as I could get. But again, monsters, monsters in Ireland and like the tales that we have are many. And not all of them come from the other world. Not all of them come out of the on sale Ella, the other life. Um, like Ellen Treekeon, for example, which comes out of the Cave of the Cats or the great boars that kind of tear up and make the mucklucks in and around Rathcrohan. Um, I think there's also some birds that come out and actually cause a wasteland to happen in Connacht as well. So we have many of these kind of tales, but in this, there is this story of cre these monstrous creatures. And in this instance, it's an octopus or the Mata, this giant creature which would suck a man in armor right the way down underneath its waves and drown them. Um, and it's resolved by the Dagda. So that is our, our story. That is where the lore ends. But for those who are still here, I have a bit of a hot take. <laughs> and this is completely 100% speculative, folks. This is where the crossover of my storytelling brain and my nerdetry merges with my mythology brain and my Irish interests. Because there are many kind of tales that we have now, many modern works of fiction, which go back to those older mythologies, which kind of tend to take leanings or information from the older stories, much of it actually Irish. When we look at the tales of Tristan Isolde, one of the great romances, that's actually based on Dermot and Grania from like, you know, the earlier sagas of Ireland. If we go looking at the Arthurian tales of the Green Knight, where the Green Knight comes in and like, you know, challenges Sir Gwain to cut off his head, and then he must, you know, give his own head in response. That is pretty much exactly lifted from Fled Vrikran, the, the Brickroos feast from the Ulster cycle. So there are many of these tales which people believe are more modern interpretations or are niche, but they're actually sourced from Ireland. And so my speculation, folks, my hot take speculation, is it possible that this octopus headed monstrosity with a ravening body living under the waves and ev ending up, you know, with its you know, head bashed in a certain amount by the ancient Irish Dagda god uh, or god Dagda it may have in some way inspired uh, one of the world famous horror novelists to create an entity known as Cthulhu, this monstrous octopus headed entity with, you know, webbed hands and feet and these draconic style wings on it, which is slumbering beneath the waves, hibernating and said to bring about the ruin of all the world. Um, it's very interesting in that we have that kind of very popular pop culture references in Nerdetry to this instance. So maybe it was inspired, maybe it wasn't. Um, but in my heart and my entertainment, for purely my own speculative entertainment, I may end up writing more of a tale, a fictional tale about the Dagda versus Cthulhu, because if Cthulhu does rise, I know who I'm going to talk to. You know, the guy who has skills and expertise driving octopus headed monstrosities off and away and underneath the waves again. So with that, thank you very much for joining us. I really appreciate you being us here with us here at the Irish Pagan School. And again, I'd like to remind you, we have so much more resources. It's not all hot takes and speculative fiction. A lot of this is actually reviewing the manuscripts that we have, taking our time to go through the lore that we have and explore the culture and the language of Ireland and its spirituality, its native spirituality. So from all of us here at the Irish Pagan School, pop along to irishpagan.com school forward slash free take a free class see if there's something that's interesting you to you there join the mailing list because it allows you to get access to a whole lot of other free resources that we do on a regular basis and for me to you slon goodbye and take care of yourself <laughs>